Oh, hello, folks. So I'm starting a new series on learning MATLAB uh, using LiveScript uh, notebooks. This is um, MATLAB's equivalent to uh, Jupyter Labs uh, notebooks. Um, they've had this for a while, but not a lot of people uh, use it. Uh, which is kind of funny because it's much easier to learn MATLAB when you use um, um, the live notebooks. And uh, the other thing, uh, I don't know if uh, most people know, but uh, Octave is kind of a public version of MATLAB. So if you don't have access to MATLAB, most of the commands you see here uh, will work uh, identically in um, Octave. This is the Octave um, interface. As you can see, it's pretty similar to, to MATLAB. Um, it doesn't have a live notebook here in, this, in the application, but there is a kernel um, for Jupyter Notebooks um, <clears throat> that you can uh, install and use uh, the Octave engine in a Jupyter Notebook. So you could kind of get um, the same similarity. So let's jump right into it. Um, to create a new um, live script, you just come to the new and you uh, click on uh, live script and it's going to create uh, an empty notebook with uh, one of these cells here okay and then you can um, type in your commands in the cell and to run the cell all you have to do is click right here on the on the sidebar on the left uh, you can see notebooks in uh, two ways which is uh, where you see the the execution of the command right below the line or on the executed on a side window. I, I prefer to see it uh, kind of um, have the execution under the command. I think it flows better. Uh, so we're going to start here by clearing all the uh, variables. As you can see, I already have some stuff here. And we're going to clear the command window. Um, if I have something here, uh, it will clear the, the command window down here. And uh, it will close all figure windows if there are any open. So let's just go and click here to the left. As you can see, it cleared all my variables and uh, closed all the figure windows like we talked about. So let's start uh, talking about MATLAB types. Uh, you assign a type to a variable with the equal operator. So when I click here, I assign the integer one to variable A. Um, the next type would be real numbers. So, you know, just uh, say B equals 2.7. You can use uh, complex numbers, and you can see as I create these variables, they get added to my workspace here on the right. So um, I can create a complex number just doing the square root of minus one. And you can see it created C there, uh, zero on the real part, and plus one I on the imaginary part. Uh, you have uh, strings. So we can just assign string to D. Uh, for vectors, you use the square brackets and you can uh, separate the values by space or uh, commas. Um, so there you have a row vector. You can create a column vector by either transposing, and this is the transpose operator in MATLAB, 
or so you can transpose the, the vector or you can use the semicolons to end uh, the line okay so same effect uh, matrices um, so you can do like uh, you know one space and then the line separator and the three four that will create a two by two matrix or you can use the commas uh, like I mentioned before right commas sometimes are interesting when you're creating code um, it makes the code more readable where you want to separate um, where you want to separate the values uh, by code I mean like programming uh, type of stuff uh, and then let's talk about uh, ar arrays, tables, and, and data sets. So I'm going to load here uh, an existing data set from uh, the machine learning uh, toolbox, which is called carsmall.mat. Um, this data set loads uh, these columns here, horsepower, displacement, um, model year, model MPG, so a number of columns here that you can use to play around a little bit. So you can create a, a vector uh, or, or an array um, by concatenating the different uh, column vectors with each of the data, uh, the data from the, from your data, from your source, right? So you could create an X, X uh, array uh, using the square brackets. So here I'm creating X equals uh, acceleration, cylinders, displacement, horsepower, model year, and weight. Let's see uh, what happens here. So you can see there I created one column for each of the of the uh, column vectors that I had right now you notice that uh, this doesn't have titles or or any special features like that it's just the the pure numbers right the interesting thing about a, a table though is that uh, it keeps uh, besides the the data right it has a number of properties um, uh, including the the column names, and that allows you to specify the columns by names or by um, by the, the the column number, uh, and it has a lot of more a lot more uh, flexibility than than uh, arrays, and uh, you can put a description and all sorts of um, fun stuff. We're going to see this on uh, later videos. Okay, you also have a data set which is similar to um, the Python data set. Uh, the remark here is that um, is, uh, MATLAB is already announcing that this might be discontinued. So going forward, what there seems like they're going to support is the, is the table format, which is um, which is in a way you know more flexible and it has uh, it has more information okay so if we look uh, at the data set it also has uh, has um, the titles for each column right but the advantage of the table is you know besides having this nice look here is uh, like I said there are, there are other properties um, the table has more properties than a data set like you can put description and uh, some other interesting things that we're gonna see in the future um, so uh, one other thing if you're new to MATLAB um, you can call um, the history of the commands that you typed in the command window just doing an up arrow and then you can choose, uh, you know, whatever command you typed uh, earlier. 
Um, if you already know a part of the command that uh, you want to recall, you can type uh, a part of it and, and then use the up and down arrows to find the to go straight up to that command. Uh, scripts. When using the script editor, you can write the script uh, and then execute in the command line. So um, on on when you're not using the live notebook, a, a script looks something like this, and you can kind of create cells on your script by uh, doing a double percent sign. And uh, each one of these is an, individ an individual cell, and you click on that on the cell and you do run section and it runs just that portion that is uh, highlighted uh, in the command window that's the difference um, between the the script and the notebook when you run the script it will run on the command window and in a live notebook it runs right uh, below uh, the command so uh, you can have you know the description of what you're doing and then have a, a graph right below it so it's a lot more more flexible plus you can uh, try stuff out on the command window and once you figure out uh, what works you know just copy and paste into your uh, thought process here so um, Talking a little bit about um, how to uh, see what what variables are available, you can use the whose command. Um, that will display all the the variables with their sizes. You know how much memory it's taking, uh, the type. Uh, so you have you get a little bit more information then you have uh, over on the workspace and many times you have uh, you need more space so you you have your workspace kind of uh, uh, shrunk down there so this this can be useful uh, you can you know kind of get the type of one specific variable with the whose you and name of the variable so you get the description of just that variable you can save uh, the history of the command line with this diary command, um, which is something interesting. Um, does if you save um, if you do save and the name of a file, it saves the entire workspace, including all the the variables and that can be very interesting sometimes you're running a model overnight uh, and you don't want to run that model every time so once you get the result you can go and save specifically that uh, that variable or just the the entire workspace with with that model and all the information you need to run the, the model right uh, you can, like I said, you can save a specific variable. Just doing uh, save uh, the name of the file and the name of the variable. Uh, you can clear the the workspace with with clear. Uh, oh, well, actually, we clear just a right. Um, if we do a who's a here, you can see. Uh, that it's it doesn't exist anymore then do a clear all uh, it's working on it there it is all gone uh, if you do a who's it's empty now and then we can do uh, the load in the name of the variable and there it is back with the value we had before and here uh, who's, oh so I just did a who's uh, to show the variables back and uh, um, 
the last thing I wanted to 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 show here that's interesting in uh, live scripts is that you can insert equa insert equations. Uh, just go and insert and uh, click on the equation box. Let's do another thing because this is kind of interesting. So you get all your Greek letters and you have uh, all your symbols here and you can insert either using this editor or you can uh, um, use uh, latex uh, format. Okay. Um, and uh, just to end this, this uh, initial uh, or beginner's introduction, uh, how do you get help, right? So you just type help in the name of the command and you can run here and uh, the interesting thing is that the help uh, gets pasted in the notebook so you can even do like uh, you know your, your notes of the most interesting commands just do help a, a bunch of the things you use the most and then you can save it for for uh, easy reference right well I'm gonna end this video here because my idea is to keep these short uh, but focused uh, one thing I've noticed in the videos out there is like they're usually half hour, 40 minutes, and sometimes you want to find just that one topic and you have to keep scrolling to find what you need. So I'm going to try to keep these short and, and focused and then you can search the topic you want uh, just by, by going to that video. Um, so... Um, that makes referencing uh, a little bit easier.